Okay, all the lights are on. Today we're drinking mead from a horn. Um, I secretly want to be a Viking. We're building this. Today we're making a um, gun case, a concealed gun case that's uh, like a 2.0 version. My very first video on YouTube was a concealed gun case. It was a three foot gun case um, that's big enough to house, you know, rifles and pistols and whatever you want to put in there basically. Um, but I recently got an order for a two foot one that's specifically designed for pistols. So I decided to make another video to revisit that old gun case but I added a bunch of stuff to it. So the gas struts, the RFID locks, um, and this is the blackout flag. So if you guys saw that flag on um, on Instagram, this is what the, um, the client ordered was the blackout flag. So <clears throat> I thought it'd be cool to do a kind of two-part tutorial how I get the blackout flag done. So that's gonna be the first half of the video. So if you don't wanna see that, you can just skip to the middle. I'll put a timestamp around here somewhere. Um, that's just the, the case build after the flag's done. And then um, I'm gonna go over all the uh, um, the 2.0 stuff like the RFID lock and the polyurethane foam. I use that instead of the wall control stuff because um, wall control doesn't come in this size as far as I know anyway. And um, the client wanted the polyurethane so we could customize it. Without further ado, let's get right into this build. No, that sucks. So uh, let's get into the build. So like I said, the first part of this is going to be um, how to make just a two foot flag. Uh, basically how my gun cases work are they're just, it's a case, I build a flag that I would you could just mount on your wall um, and then I, I attach it with hinges to a box and then attach the lock. So the first half of this video is going to be how I get that blackout flag done. There's tons of these flag tutorials all over YouTube so um, I haven't seen any blackout flag ones so uh, hopefully you'll get, you'll get something out of it. Um, so what I'm doing here is just taking 1x12 Select Pine, I got it at Home Depot, they have it at Lowe's, uh, I think it's called Premium Pine there. Um, and the reason I pay for the Premium Select stuff is because working with Common Board is much more difficult, this is, um, it's just better quality wood. So what you do first is just cut um, two feet off the 1x12, you mark everything to two feet. You can leave them long if you want, I don't, I just do two feet because um, at the end of the day if it's... 23 and 7 eighths inches, then it's not that big of a deal. 20, 23 and 3 quarters inches. Um, so cut them to two feet first, right? Um, you, I think you only need to do two sections of two footers for a, a two foot flag. Uh, and then you set your saw, your table saw to one inch. That's how tall the strip, the stripes are from this section right here. Uh, and then you just run it through until you have 13 stripes. Uh, and then you have all the makings for the flag right there. It's pretty easy. So you can see right here that I am, I lined them all up in whatever order um, I think will look nice. It doesn't really matter so much here because you're going to get a lot of, you're going to stain all these and everything like that. Um, so what I'm doing here, and it's kind of hard to tell on the one inch um, stripes which way the grain is um, curving, but in order to get the flag to remain as flat as possible or over time when moisture is absorbed into the wood, um, it'll start to cup or bow or whatever. So a really good way to combat that, and this is true for cutting boards as well because they're um, in wet environments a lot, is to orient the grain in such a way to where every other stripe is is um, counteracting the one before it, right? Or every other strip. So you want to do like a, a happy face, frowny face with the um, with the wood grain, and it's I'll show you in a close up in a second. But you want to do a happy face, frowny face, happy face, frowny face, um, and then once you get everything counteracted like that, that's when you number them all, which is what I'm going to do right here. Uh, and that way you don't get them out of order and you can take them and put them in any um, 
orientation you want for staining or clear coating or whatever you're going to do and you can always get them back into that orientation. So um, I'm using India ink here. So I've, I've used some like black stains but they for some reason they're always brown and I didn't want to use paint because paint will cover the wood grain. I want to see the wood grain just a little bit. Um, this India ink is actually a calligraphy ink and I think it's like 12 bucks on Amazon and it goes a really long way. So um, the way I apply that is I just put it into a small uh, like plastic cup or whatever, this disposable plastic cup, just a little bit, maybe like an ounce or two, and use a foam brush and just paint it straight on. Um, you do not want to, you don't want to like drizzle it onto the wood uh, because it, it'll seep in really, really deep into those areas. And um, you can actually see where you like drizzle it in before you were able to like spread it out. So make sure you put it in a cup and then um, like paint it on as smooth as possible because if it sits for even a couple of seconds in one area, it will um, it'll be a darker black than the rest of wherever you spread it to. So make sure you use a brush. All right, so now we're moving on to how I get the um, the like difference between what would traditionally be like the red and white stripes, right? So um, basically all I'm doing here is taking all of the even number, or excuse me, odd numbered stripes, which are, you know, the red ones, basically. Um, another reason it's helpful to number all the stripes so you can just keep them evens and odds and it's uh, easy to know what goes where. And I'm taking all the odd, numbers, one, odd numbered ones and taking them over to a um, like makeshift spray booth type thing right here, just a little tabletop. And then I'm, I'm hitting it with a ton of the crystal clear, like four coats of crystal clear um, enamel from Rust-Oleum. It's, it's a like polyurethane spray that it's a really easy, um, I use it in pretty much all my flags because it's fast, easy, it's durable, and it looks really nice. Um, but for this one I'm using the crystal clear one, I usually use satin. So this is the, the shiniest, glossiest one you can get and it'll, it'll provide the highest contrast from the traditional like white stripes um, and you'll see the difference here in a minute. And then so I put on a, a pretty thick layer. Um, I let them sit for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're no longer tacky. They're, they're pretty dry. Um, and then just really, really lightly um, sand with 220 uh, just to kind of knock down some of the like dust nibs and all the other stuff on there and then it'll get a, a much smoother and shinier finish. Um, and I did this, uh, I think three times or four times. You can kind of tell uh, when you when you should stop. Also, if you're gonna if you are gonna sand between coats, you need to do it really really lightly because this India ink will come off um, pretty pretty easily, and then you'll have to go back and uh, restain or dye it or whatever it is. Technically, I guess you're dyeing it. Okay, so here's a little jig I made. Uh, I make so many of these flags that this cut down on. on um, time you don't you do not need one of these but it's really it's pretty easy to make all this jig is is a right angle um, with a floor on it to support everything so it's even all the way across uh, and it's coated in packing tape so the glue won't stick to it uh, it's made out of MDF and pine uh, I wouldn't use MDF again just because it bends a little bit but whatever I'll do a video on that jig uh, I'm gonna make a couple more so I can make multiple flags at a time and I'll go through that process um, if that's something you guys want um, so what I'm doing here is now the, the stripes have completely dried and I left all of the even numbered or white stripes just totally without any finish at all and they still don't have any finish on them. So that's how you get that juxtaposition between the red and white stripes. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm gluing up the, the whole flag minus one section and I'll, get to, I'll show you that in here in a sec. The jig helps keep everything on the left side aligned because the right side is going to get trimmed up right here um, so it doesn't really matter about the left so much. All right so applying glue what I'm doing is I'm leaving I'm leaving I'm putting glue on every single um, face and I'm just gonna flip it down for the glue up like every other flag I've ever seen but I'm leaving glue off of this seam right here because later we're gonna take this apart and then this will be a section and this whole piece will be a section then we're gonna cut this off sand it down um, and then engrave it. So it's really easy to do. You can do a single glue up. You just leave glue off of um, between um, seven and eight, right? So it's, it's the fastest, most efficient way that I've found to do it. 
Um, in the previous videos, I was using plywood for the unions and for multiple reasons, it was just a bad, bad situation. So this is really easy and it keeps everything consistent. Um, all you have to do afterwards is um, sand it and we'll get to that. For some reason, I put a ton of glue on here. I don't know why, um, but I ended up having to make a second flag anyway, so this wasn't even, it didn't even matter. But one helpful tip, if you do have a lot of glue squeeze out, wait about 15 minutes until it starts to gel up and then use an old chisel or um, even like a plastic straw works really well. And you can just kind of run it along without damaging the wood or spreading it all over the place. Especially in something like this, you don't really want to use the wet paper towel trick because it's just going to like smear it all over and it's, it's not going to look very good. You can in like kind of spot treating it, but the wet or the old chisel after 15 minutes works the best for me. Okay, so I'm right now I um, realized that I had made a big mistake. Up until this point, I'd only made one of these blackout flags and it was kind of an experiment. It turned out really good, but it was a while back, so I hadn't made it. I'd only made the one and it was uh, a few months before I made this one. And I realized that after I'm at this section right now that the difference between the red and white stripes, right, so the now glossy and matte finish, I guess, or no finish stripes, just wasn't enough. And the, the problem is the, and you can see it here in a second, the problem is that I only put one coat of India ink on, so you can see a lot of the wood grain and it, it distracted from the finish. The, the like glossy finish and it, it, it made the pieces look more similar than dissimilar and I, I wasn't happy with it so I ended up making a second flag which um, we'll cut to in a sec but you can see here now that because I left glue off of that one seam between seven and eight stripe seven and eight um, they're two now they're two separate pieces and then we'll get to cutting the union after I uh, make that second flag so I went back um, put three coats of India ink on that's the new flag. Three coats of India ink, and um, you probably could have done two. But here you can see the difference. You can clearly tell, um, like when it's just sitting on the the jig right there, you can see the difference between the stripes. Where the other one, you couldn't at all. It, it had to have light shining on it, and that's not the desired effect. Okay, so now I'm just going over to the crosscut sled on my table saw, marking out nine and a half inches from the the top seven section right here. Um, because the union is nine and a half inches. So I cut that. Um, and one thing to note, if, if you're gonna do it this way, every time you make a cut with like a table saw or pretty much anything other than like a bandsaw, you're gonna lose an eighth of an inch of length, right? Cause that's the width of the saw blade. So what ends up happening is that this section is about an eighth of an inch longer than this section because you cut out an eighth of an inch on the seam between the union here, right? So you don't want to mess with the length of this at all that's why i have that jig set up to go all the way to the left because if this um if you have to trim this side in order to get the um this to be flushed up like the left side then it'll the the length from the stars where they end here to the end of the flag will be different on that side than it is on this side so it looked like it will have shifted left so once you cut this nine and a half don't touch it again you can trim it up um, as long as this section is longer than this. But if you have one stripe that's like over here and you need to flush it up, it's gonna mess with your union. So that's why that jig is so helpful because you can butt everything up to the left and then everything that's not even will be on this side. And then once you're done gluing it back up, all you have to do is run it through the table saw, which I'll show you, um, and you'll get a nice, clean, crisp edge. It's not quite two feet long, but you could easily mitigate that if you wanted to leave it, I don't know, half an inch longer on all the stripes, um, but I found that having it be 23 and three quarters inches is not uh, like a deal breaker. It looks just as good. The proportions don't get thrown off, so. Um, now I'm using my new drum sander. This is like the second time I was able to use it. It's awesome. I need some dust collection for it because it literally shut off my furnace because of all the dust. It's ridiculous. So the idea here is you're removing all of the stain um, and in this case, clear coat, which ordinarily wouldn't on a red, white, and blue flag wouldn't go on until the end, but because we're doing this blackout, it has to come on early. Um, you're right, you're mo removing this. this. This section would be stained blue. So you're just taking all of what would be the red, you'd have red and white stripes in this area because that's what you would have stained it. Um, so now I'm just removing all of the, um, the India ink for the most part, it's gonna get dyed again anyway. Um, 
and then uh, making it smooth because you're not gonna be able to sand it after you um, stain it. So just making it smooth with the, removing it with the drum sander and then um, hitting it with the Orville sander. And then I just did three coats of India ink here. And because this is you know traditionally a different color, I wasn't super worried about matching either this or this. It's just kind of in between a little bit. So I put a couple coats of this on. I don't think I sanded in between. I might have, I remember. And so this is the glue up for the full flat, this is the final glue up. So what you end up doing is putting glue on the seam here and then the seam here, because that's the only, now you're in three pieces. And you just do basically what you did before with adding a, a clamp in the horizontal direction. I usually just put one clamp right in the middle and that's been enough. All right, so now I'm just taking it over to old Ronald Ray gun. And um, this is just a standard like stars and bars union. There's no like custom engraving or anything in it. All right, so ordinarily here, this is when you'd want to, if you're gonna engrave or use whatever you're gonna do, um, ordinarily you'd want to remove all of the like stain or whatever. This India ink goes really, really deep into the wood. So on this one, since I'm gonna stain it black, or I'm gonna dye it black anyway, I didn't really care so much about um, if it was discolored or didn't look uniform throughout because it's going to receive a dye. But what I wanted was just a super deep um, cut from the laser so once it get, gets stained again you can still see the stars. There'll, there'll be a physical difference between um, the uh, color, like the um, star and the union itself. So, whereas before you, you, you want it to be like a different color. And if you want to paint the stars white or anything else, if you want any other color, you need to mask it like with frog tape. I use frog tape because it works better than the, the blue tape. And blue tape's played out. I don't use this blue tape anymore. I would use that and then and then engrave it, whether it's CNC, laser, um, or even a jungle tool or something like that. All right, so now I'm just flushing up the end, like I said. Um, just kind of sneak up on it. I don't want to. I want to take off as little as possible. So what I end up doing here is just finding the shortest piece and then making sure I take off like just a minute amount. Uh, now I'm just sanding down the back. This isn't really a necessary step, but it it does help. Um, I think it looks more professional if you can do that. But it takes a really long time with an orbital sander. One of the reasons I bought this thing was for this purpose. Um, also, if you're going to put anything on the back, like engrave it, then you should probably make it flat. This is, I, I did this one, I wanted this one to be flat because it's gonna be open, you're gonna see it and people are probably gonna like touch it and stuff, so. All right, you can see where I had some overspray from the clear coat on the bottom section right there, which is not a big deal. I go back and sand it and then just apply the stain. And then here I didn't, I didn't care about um, the, uh, wood grain at all, like showing it all. I think it looks really nice on the sides. It adds a little bit of like contrast from the front. So I just did one, one coat. Right there I'm just sanding that off and then reapplying the India ink. And now the flag is done. So the flag, at this point, you could just like put a French cleat on the back or even do keyholes. That's what I was doing for a really long time because they're free, but they're not as like user friendly as like a French cleat is. So I ended up going with those, and then you could just hang it on your wall, and then there's, that's the blackout flag. That is the easiest way to do it. Oh, I, I, I stay in the back, sorry. I'm not, I wasn't, it's not done. And now it's done. Okay, so I took some measurements for the flag because, like I said, the flag is gonna be a little bit shorter than two feet, so if you make a box, that is relative to two feet, right? Um, and then the flag is 23 and three quarters inches, your, your dimensions are gonna be all off. So I waited until the flag is made uh, because like I said, you're gonna trim up the end. Sometimes you have to trim more than other times if you know it slides around on you during a glue up or whatever it is. So I always just wait until the flag is done and I have the exact dimension. So what I ended up doing for this box, this is very, very simple. I did a quarter, a quarter inch on the side, which you could probably do more like, um, like a half an inch, just to give it a little bit more of a reveal, um, so you don't see the box as much. But I wanted to make it as big as possible because this is a smaller box. Um, 
and I did a quarter inch on the sides, both sides. I did a three quarter inch on the bottom because you need some kind of like lip to grab to open it. Another thing you could do there if you wanted more room on the bottom is um, make it a little bit longer or whatever, but then use a um, like a chamfer bit or something that would basically, under from the underside right here, that would make a handle um, or some kind of like pull, not a handle, like some kind of pull. And then the top is completely flush because that's where you mount the hinge. So there's no reveal here, quarter inch here, and three quarter inch on the bottom. And like I said, this can be mitigated. You could, if you want it to be more uniform or have a half an inch or something like that, you can do that. Just make sure you have something for them to like grip onto to open the case. I'm just doing butt joints here. Uh, it's important to note that you're gonna see this case from the side, right? So you don't want that exposed end grain on the side, uh, or maybe you do, I don't know. Uh, but I don't think it looks very good. So what I ended up doing is making sure that the vertical pieces were the longer pieces and then the, the top was really the shorter just because we're doing butt joints. Or you can do a mitered box as well. Uh, but I just, this doesn't really matter so much. The, the people are going to be looking at the flag for the most part. So I just hid the end grain and that's about it. Um, used glue, brad nails, a, um, the woodpecker's mini square to check for square. And then I went back and countersunk and put screws on it. If you guys don't have, if you guys don't have the Yamana countersink bit, that big one I was just using, that thing is awesome. So I, I've seen it all over YouTube, and a couple of my buddies have it, and it, it's worth it. The thing is really, really nice. It's easy to use. Okay, and then here's another. Um, Here's another thing. I use uh, half inch plywood for the back. I would ordinarily sink this into, uh, I would cut a rabbit out and then put the plywood in so you don't see what I was talking about with the end grain. So you don't see the end grain of the plywood behind it, right? So it would just sit into the back. But um, I wanted this box to be as big as possible and the half inch plywood, or uh, uh, quarter inch plywood, sorry, is not, it's not all that distracting. I took a look at it before, and if I had, um, if it was too distracting, I would have, I would have done the rabbit. And then um, I used that little woodpecker's edge guide thing to mark the centers of all that. That's what those lines are. And then got it all flushed up. Now, I am purposefully not gluing in this back panel because I want, if the batteries die or fall out, which in one of my cases that I mailed, UPS or whoever it was, um, the like when they were sh shipping it, the batteries popped out and they had a hard time, they couldn't get it open because there's no power to the lock. Um, so I, in that case too, I had left the back panel off or uh, not with no glue so they could just take the screws off and then you can get to the case, which is the same with this one. So. I, there's no glue on the back panel by design, so it's kind of your liberal back door into this thing if the batteries um, if the batteries go dead or fall out or whatever it is. This is the two inch polyethylene, polyurethane, polyethylene, I don't remember. I, there, there'll be a link to all this stuff in the description. Foam, um, this is like that hard foam that's really easy to, you just lay whatever you want to put in there and cut it out with an X-Acto knife. Um, or a box cutter or something. And I wanted this to be a friction fit. Um, using a blowtorch here to um, burn the wood so it gives it a little bit more um, like interesting appeal. I, I thought about dyeing it black, but I thought that would have looked like a little much. This makes it a lot more, it gives a lot more contrast versus just like a giant black box sitting on the wall. And then, uh, I don't know if I showed it, but I sanded that afterwards and it, it really brings down the, um, really brings down like the really dark charred bits. Makes it more brown than black, looks good. All right, so now I'm just fixing them out the hinges. I am deciding on that or I'm making sure that that quarter inch reveal that we decided on, make sure I cut everything to the right length. I'm marking the center of the flag, put the hinges on it, and then I'm using some frog tape to secure it while I pre-drill and secure to the flag. Um, 
you could do this in any order, I guess, it doesn't really matter. And now I'm just doing the same thing for the box. Just pre-drilling, being careful not to drill through the box because the section right below that doesn't have any foam, so you would not, you would see the holes, which would look bad. Uh, one thing to note, it's really important when you're doing the piano hinge to get the holes centered in, uh, like when you're pre-drilling, to get them centered in the hole itself, because if you don't, it'll pull the hinge. When you put the screw in, it'll pull the hinge away from like being flush. So uh, that's just something to know. I had a problem with that. I, it's difficult to fix, but ended up getting it fixed. So um, another thing too, um, apparently they don't make the, <laughs> all my other gun cases I've made in the past, I've used like the 32 inch or whatever it is, black piano hinge. Um, but they didn't have any black ones. I couldn't find any at Lowe's, Home Depot, or on Amazon. Um, so I, I ended up just going with the silver one. It's not a big deal. This thing is going to be mounted up, so you're not going to see it. And it doesn't look bad, but I ordinarily would have gone with black just because it's, it fits the aesthetic of the box. Um, but I don't know. They just, for some reason, didn't have them. They stopped making them, I guess. I don't know. Okay, so now I'm going to be mounting the like gas struts. Um, like I said, this will be linked down in the description. Um, these also work for the bigger cases, the um, like the three foot ones. It's the same ones I used, um, and they work great for both. This was actually a four pack. Oh, there's some dust on the lens. Sorry about that. Um, dang sawdust. Um, so these will be linked. Like I said. And these are pretty simple to install. It comes with pretty straightforward directions. It's only like one page or half a page directions. Like every time I do this, it's always like a, it takes me forever because I get, you know, nervous about putting it in the wrong spot. Ideally, you should do this before the foam, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to interfere with the foam, so I just did it without the foam in there. This is a, I, I left the box purposely a little long for the foam. Um, so I wouldn't have to cut it to get the hinges in. Um, I did end up making a mistake, which I'll show you here in a second. Once I get these, actually, I made it. I made a uh, a silly mistake that doesn't affect the overall usage of the box by any means. But if you can point that out in the comments, um, it has to do with the hinges. Maybe I'm the first person. Maybe I'll mail you a shirt. This shirt. You like this one? Ooh. But the obvious, the the more obvious mistake is when I'm mounting the second part onto the flag itself, you need to make sure that the hinge itself is gonna clear the box when it shuts. And you can see right there that I did, I mounted it a little bit too far to the outside, so it was an easy fix. All I have to do is back up the screws, slide it over, it was like an eighth of an inch. But just make sure that the, the hardware itself is gonna clear the box before you uh, set it, and now it shuts, it works perfectly. All right, so the last major thing we have to do is add the RFID lock. Now, this is a lock I've used in the past, and it works really well. It goes all the way through like the three quarter inch material. Um, this thing takes a while to get set up. This is a lot of trial and error. It's really easy to do, but um, you want to figure out where you want to, where you're going to put it, and then you just kind of go step by step. What I do first is I mount the latch uh, first to the box. From there, uh, attach the, the um, remote or like the remote access, like the, the bigger part. I attach that to the flag. Um, I decided to put it on the side for this one just because uh, I thought it'd be less in the way. Um, what I ended up doing here is picking that, and then I just cut it out with a um, with a box cutter and a chisel. Actually, worked really well. It's a small chisel for the latch. You want it to, you want the very top, like flat edge of the latch to be just below the um, edge of the box. So you don't want it perfectly flush, you want it down just a little bit. And that'll provide enough room for it to kind of like shut because it is coming down at an angle. Um, and then what I ended up doing too, just because it was having a little trouble getting in and out, um, I ended up taking the, uh, just my fingers and just very gently bending the latch towards me a little bit towards the box so it would kind of be at an angle for that um, I don't know what I'm doing would be at an angle when it comes down 
into it. Uh, just be careful because you could break it that way. Yeah, this, this part is just a bunch of trial and error. It comes with these little 3M strips, so what you can do is you mount one of them and then set the lock into it, take the strip off, and then shut the lid, hold it for a second, make sure it's like good to go, uh, use the card, open it, and then you can put the screws in. You also want to make sure that you uh, pair the card, like at least one of the cards to the, to the lock before you I mean, this should go without saying, but um, make sure you pair one of the locks because once you mount that, that second piece, so you're not gonna be able to open it, you have to take the back panel off and remove it that way. Um, so now I wanted to get a clear coat. I should have done this before I mounted all the hardware, but I got ahead of myself. Um, so I wanted to get a clear coat on here. So I'm just using frog tape to cover up the latch, the hinge, or not the hinge, the latch, the um, gas struts, and the little like reader box itself. And then I'm using these super cool tumblers cardboard. <laughs> uh, tumblers are fire. Uh, just to kind of keep it off of polyurethane. Look at those tumblers. Those are dope. Uh, I put it on a Lazy Susan just to make life a little easier when I'm clear coating. Uh, I let it dry, you know, 20 minutes or so, took the tape off, and then I just hit the back. I didn't want to get any on the. Um, the flag itself, so I thought I would wait and then just close it, and it'd be easier to like kind of mask with the with the cardboard. Okay, the very last step is to add a French cleat. I'm using an 18 inch French cleat here just because I, I usually use the two inch ones uh, for just the flags because they're not a whole lot of weight, they're not articulating, um, so I didn't really worry about it. But this, th these aren't very expensive on uh, Amazon. And they're really, really simple. It also allows you to take it off and remove the back panel. If you're screwing the back panel to the wall, which is what I was doing, you can't get into these. All right, I'm just using a combination score to mark a line, make sure it's level, or you know, it will be level when it's mounted to the wall. And then I'm just pre-drilling. This doesn't matter if you go all the way through because the foam is back there, and it's not. You're not going to go all the way through the front of the foam with this little drill bit. And then all the hardware comes with it, and then it also comes with um, drywall anchors for the piece that, is, that attaches to the wall. That's it. Easy peasy. Okay, so that's the whole thing. It's not, it's a super simple build. Like I said, it's kind of a two-step process. You do the flag first, which you can do something different. You don't have to do a, that style of flag or you can just paint a piece of plywood to put on the front um, or whatever you want to do. It's This is just kind of what's been popular lately. So um, it was really, really easy. I Like I said, I'd never done the polyurethane foam before but it really wasn't that difficult to work with and it wasn't very expensive either. I, th I think a, uh, it's like a five foot piece. I don't know, it was like maybe 30 bucks or something like that. I'll, like I said, it'll all be linked. I'll link everything in the description so you guys can pick some up for yourself. Um, what else? Did I leave anything off? Oh, yes, I did. So, one thing I noticed because this case is significantly lighter than the bigger cases that I've made is that when you put the card on and then you pull right here, it'll kind of rock off the top of that. Um, quiet, you. There you go. It'll kind of like rock off of the top of the French cleat that I have on there. Um, so, what I ended up doing is going back. Um, and at the very top, I added some blocking. I didn't notice it until I hung it on here, so I, I, it was after I was done filming it. But I ended up just adding a little strip all the way across, so it doesn't, it can't like rack off the wall when you when you lightly. You don't have to pull very hard, but when you open this thing up, it um, you don't want to have it like kind of rack off the off the wall a little bit. So that's it. Like I said, super easy. Um, but yeah, that's it. So let me, let me know what you guys think. 
Let me know if you like the blackout flag or if there's any, if you guys make one of those, if there's any different like variations or, you know, uh, or something like that. Or if you want to see more blackout flags, I think they're really cool. They're pretty easy to make. Um, and uh, if you if you follow, just remember to put the right amount of coats on there. And uh, yeah, all right, I think it's time for uh, mead review. It's not beer, so, I mean, it's kind of beer. This is uh, this is the Moonlight Meadery, uh, and this is the 13.5. So this thing is, is actually 13.5% <laughs> because it's honey mead or whatever it is, so. I mean, I like it.